Hi, John Garfield. How do we get out of the letter and into the spirit? Um, we all have roots in the spirit of religion. Um, let's just take that as a starting place. <laughs> and that spirit of religion is where we have the answers, the proof texts. We know what to do because we know what God wants without even talking to him. We've read his book. We have systematic theology. We know all the principles and the promises. And uh, the fact is, sonship starts when we admit we don't know what to do. And we ask the Father to show us. <laughs> That's where it all begins. So this verse scares me. It's Matthew 7, 22. It says, many will say unto me on that day, Lord, Lord. So, so he's talking about in that day. He's not talking about the scribes and Pharisees. He's talking about people like us. Um, so many will say unto me in that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name? And in your name cast out demons, and in your name perform many mighty miracles. <laughs> <laughs> and then he will declare to them, I never knew you. Leave me, you who practiced lawlessness. In the King James, it says, you who, uh, you workers of iniquity. Uh, so that's a sort of a sin category. It, it, you know, it's one thing to commit a sin, but have the propensity to sin is really the definition of iniquity or lawlessness. So these are people that have a propensity. And that's what the religious spirit is. It's a propensity to um, do your own thing or at least do the stuff you think is the right stuff without you know, really connecting with the Father's heart, really uh, hearing from Him. So this religious spirit is defined by all the things we do when we haven't had a conversation to hear what the Father is saying or see what He's doing. <laughs> so the, the nature of this iniquity is independence. Um, so here's a few trademarks of this religious spirit. There is you know, a dozen more, but uh, this will give you an idea. It backfills lack of purpose, lack of kingdom purpose with works and recipes. It's performance oriented to the letter. And um, I know that because I, I'm a recovering engineer <laughs> and I work with those kind of people all the time. Uh, it's the sense of needing to work for God, know him intellectually, but not from the heart. Uh, it's emotionally rigid. It's the lack of transparency. It's disconnected from deep relationships. It's superficial. Um, it's argumentative. It's focused on being right over having heart connected. It's judgmental. Um, it's focused on outward appearance. It does the right things, casting out demons, healing the sticks, doing many mighty works. Um, but it's done out of self-will and it gets rejected by the Father. Um, so the Holy Spirit, or the Spirit of Jesus, so that, that's the religious spirit. Now, what are we talking about? What's the, you know, the right side of the equation? So the Holy Spirit, um, or the Spirit of Jesus, uh, has an entirely different feel. It feels loving, forgiving, and healing. When you're next to those kind of people, that's what it feels like. <laughs> it's totally different. Uh, it's, it's uh, you know, warm. Uh, and it's that way when we first experience Jesus. That's how God feels to us. And as we move into the kingdom and get involved in co-laboring with him, that, that, it still feels like love. But then the love takes on this um, era of more like respect or honor. Uh, from Because we see the majesty of the Father's purpose and we also see, the, um, we see our role in it, our purpose. Uh, the one Father wrote in our heart, you know, and we see the connection between, you know, the strat, you know, what God's doing right now, the strategy for the future, and how He's redeemed our past um, in a way that, you know, makes a tapestry. It's our lives suddenly start to make sense and say, like, "Hey, <laughs> this might be fun after all." And um, so we be, we also um, begin to uh, let go of. You know the performance orientation and at the same time our identity is still shaped around the discovery of our purpose relationship grows from revelation and preaching and all that stuff um, to include co-laboring actually doing something <laughs> and this idea that intimacy and the greater works making a difference on earth they go together that's what the father's doing um, and so this kingdom business relationships are loving because we are aware of one another's purpose. And, and we have an appreciation for both the anointing and talent that 
God is invested in those around us. And we can see one another's hearts. The, it's like the fig leaves are off and we have this refreshing transparency that, that's normal and helpful <laughs> and creative. <laughs> so what, when you think about relationships, you know, I, I, I have heard this phrase a lot, rules for relationships. It's an oxymoron. <laughs> Love only happens when we see the purpose in people's hearts. The, the discipline to love one another doesn't come from self-discipline. You cannot make yourself love someone. It originates from hearing Father and seeing why and co-laboring on a shared purpose, seeing the why in other people's hearts. So that's the kingdom business, business definition of ecclesia. We are sharing Father's purpose and Father's works. And the, the, that's the storm surviving rock between our business and our relationships. <laughs> and I, I don't know Father until I know the purpose that's in his heart. I don't know you until I know the purpose in your heart. And kingdom business starts with hearts. When, when we know one another's purpose and, and we have a shared purpose that crosses, um, you know, the, the, uh, the uh, corporation or the business. Um, so how do we do that? How do we love? You know, it's, lot, it's one thing to just say, oh, we got to love one another. <laughs> By his disciples, all men will know that you have love for one another. Um, so th this rock that, that we're founded on um, is more than a metaphor. Jesus is building his ecclesia on a rock, Matthew 16, 18. And we're advised to build our house on a rock so it doesn't wash away, Matthew 7, 24. That rock is Jesus. It's also Mount Hermon. It's also Mount Zion. It's also heaven. Uh, so the real picture is that Jesus' atonement gave us access to the Father. Jesus is the ascension bridge to the courts of heaven and to Father's council. <clears throat> We're supposed to, in the Spirit, you know, uh, ascend to our Father and be part of what, be, that's what, how we see where he is, what he's doing, what's in his heart. Uh, John 151, I love this verse. And then he added, Verily, verily, very truly I tell you, you have seen heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. Jesus is the bridge that allows messengers like us, not just angels, to go back and forth between heaven and earth. Um, so this whole idea of sonship and conversations. Um, we all tell businessmen, <laughs> you need to hear from God. <laughs> That's true. But it's time to tell them how. Um, kingdom it is this modern era of sonship. It's new. God's moving us from charismatic crumbs to conversations and from obedient letter-bound serfs to sonship. Um, it's the business, it, it is business wisdom to, to leverage what Jesus has made available to his sons. And in terms of spiritual warfare, it's not smart to be a businessman and not know how to go to the courts of heaven and, and take accusations off people and businesses or whatever they are. And, and, to, and to allow our advocate, Jesus, to take them to the cross and to release the decrees from our Father that replace them. That, it's good business to go to the courts of heaven. <laughs> it's also good business to go to the council and be seers and doers. So Jesus really wants to show businessmen our seat in heaven at the Father's council so he can show us what he's doing and share the conversations with Jesus and the seven spirits and bring heaven to earth. And um, so the, the idea of sonship is it really is ascension. That is the consummate relational act of honoring our Father. It's seeing his purpose and bringing heaven to earth. And, and making business uh, worship, that our work is worship. And the end state, the reason we do it all, the reason we share his purpose is that we're bringing heaven to earth. We're bringing reformation to nations. We're, we're uh, fixing what's broken. We're restoring um, what's been lost. And uh, I love this verse in Psalm 84, 7. They go from strength to strength. Each one appears before God in Zion. <laughs> it's a picture of the council. 2 Corinthians 3, 5, not that we are competent in ourselves to claim anything for ourselves, but our competence comes from God. He has made us competent as ministers of a new covenant, not the letter, 
but of the Spirit. For the letter kills, but the Spirit gives life. And I want to suggest that um, the spirit of religion totally exists in business. I, I want to suggest you replace it with the spirit of Jesus. And you, and you do that by being someone who ascends to the Father, is fluent in Father's courts and counsel, and you know your place as a son. You know your purpose as a son. You know your authority as a son. And you're engaged in building his kingdom through your business because you know the why, you know the purpose, you know your purpose, and you know the Father's purpose, and you know where those two come together to do greater works. Father, in the name of Jesus, we're just releasing people in business cultures into this realm of uh, sonship, freeing them from the religious spirit, freeing them from the letter of the law into this dimension where, Father, you're co-laboring with us to build your kingdom inside our business. You're building uh, an ecclesia, a culture of sons inside our business, and it's a perfect opportunity. So in the name of Jesus, we're just releasing business leaders into their priestly role to help birth sons in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. God bless. Have a great week.